guys, it's Eric here at Farpoint Farms. Check this out. This is a big deal and I am honored. This is a Calpha SCI-48100. What is a Calpha dash whatever? This is a split phase 240 volt 10,000 watt inverter charger. This is how I go completely off grid. I have made a lot of videos here on portable power stations. I have made a lot of videos here on solar arrays. I have shown you that we tried to go off grid in 2020 and have continued to build on that ever since. I believe in self-sufficiency and it's something I don't really get into much on the channel, but there's a reason that this channel is called Farpoint Farms and not Farpoint Radios and more. This channel is about homesteading above all else, even though we really don't get into it much anymore. And being a homesteader means being self-sufficient. This solar charger and inverter, and, and I mean, this is the everything box, is going to be the cornerstone of the final chapter in that story. It really is. Let me go ahead and start unboxing it. It's a big girl. I'll get this out. This is the some of the paperwork here. There were also some other smaller boxes that arrived earlier in the week. And uh, packaging wise, holy cow, it's packed well. And there's a reason for it. She's a big, heavy girl. I don't want to hurt it getting it out of here. Wow. I don't think there's anything else in there. Yep, that's it. Even the box weighs 30 pounds. Let me go ahead and lay this down. It's, uh, I would say it's a good 50, maybe 70 pounds, honestly. It might even be more than that. And there's a reason for it. This is not an inexpensive inverter by any means. But this is kind of an all-in-one solution with, frankly, a lot of room to grow. If I can get sit up right here, there we go. Look at this big girl. That's what we got. And this will be mounted in its own uh, building along with about 17 to 20 kilowatts of 48 volt uh, power. Now, this unit is designed to also take power coming in from the grid. So it's, it's an all-in-one solution. If you wanted to have a cabin that was in an area where you do get house power or shore power but it's not very reliable and it goes out often well you could have power coming in through this to charge your battery bank and then when power goes out it's like a, a ups uninterruptible power supply it would switch immediately over to battery backup and the inverters here to provide you with 120 or 240 volt energy i'm not going to be setting it up like that this is going to be solar fed. We're going to install 5,000 watts of solar to go with this. It is capable of handling 10,000 watts of solar. That's a lot of juice. But we're going to do 5,000 watts and again have about between 17 and 20 kilowatts of bankable energy. That's the gas tank. The beauty of this is that it is 240 volt, split phase, two legs. I'm going to run this into a generator transfer switch like this one right here and we're doing a 10 switch transfer switch so we're going to be able to run nearly everything about 99 percent of everything the only thing that will still be on a regular power at this point will be our water heater and of course we might switch that over to gas i'm not sure what we're going to do with that but for right now water heater would be the only thing that this will not power in our house all the lights the washer and dryer <laughs> the well pump, the AC system, I mean, you name it, it'll all operate off of this, and we're so excited to do that. Our average household consumption here is um, 20 kilowatts, and we already have about a quarter of that, well, no, about 30% of that offset with the 1,000-watt system we use. So we're going to be moving that system down to power our lower barns, and we're going to use this to power the rest of the house. So cool. Let me go into some of the details with you on the side here. 48 volt hybrid solar charge inverter. I already gave you the part number for it. And it is a beast. It has two solar charge controllers built in, each one of which can handle 5,000 watts a piece. 
I'm going to split the load between the two of them, 2,500 watts on each leg, to give me the 5,000 watts that we're going to be powering this up with. It is split phase, 120 volt on each leg, 63 amps on each leg, 50 hertz or 60 hertz. AC phase voltage range, and this is incredible, 90 to 140 volts AC, and AC charge to battery current is 120 amps. These are massive numbers if you follow any of this stuff. A single phase output is 10,000 watts on 120 volts at 60, uh, was that, 83 amps. Wow. Each one of those is going to be that way. So you got plenty of juice. <laughs> battery input is 48 volts. 220 amps is the maximum battery discharge current. Maximum battery charge current is 200 amps. So you can feed a lot to this. The uh, PV input, MPPT input range is 100 volts DC to 500 volts DC. So you can link a lot of panels to this thing before you start having to go into parallel mode. And each solar array can have a total of 5,000 watts. Incredible. Incredible. Let me go on over to this side, see if there's anything here. Yeah. Okay. So I'll move this sideways here and then we'll lay it flat. I'll show you that as well. Main breaker. Now you're going to need some more breakers. This is, you know, you're going to see throughout the course of 2024, a lot of videos with this as the centerpiece. This is the beginning of a massive uh, job for us. We're taking down the thousand watt setup. We're building a racking system to hold 5,000 watts of solar. We're going to install that solar. We're going to install this. We're going to install a heated battery box room to hold all the batteries. You've seen me do lots of battery reviews on this channel. Well, it's time to put them all in there and get them all wired up and all warmed up so that they work all 12 months out of the year. So that'll be there too. And of course, I'll bring you along for the shunt and all the stuff that you have to have in order to set this up properly. All right, cool. Let me lower this thing down. Of course, on the front, I guess it's worth noting, digital display here. Now, I opted to get the USB. Um, it's like an app. It's a Bluetooth and wireless adapter for this that allows me to use an app on my phone. I'll be able to monitor this here at the house. But also, if we leave and go somewhere, I can also see, hey, how's, how's the, you know, is it cloudy at home? What kind of energy are we pulling in? Is everything still running properly? The beauty of using a transfer switch setup, which is what we're going to do, is that although we're going to be 99% off grid, should we get four, five, six days in a row of low uh, light conditions, you know, terrible storm or something like that, and the batteries run down and this is not able to keep up, flip a switch here, flip a switch there, and run at least, you know, 70% of the house on solar. So it's, uh, it's nice to be able to pick and choose without having to do rewiring, without having to unplug something physically and plug it back into something else. So I'm really excited about that part as well. Let me lower this thing down. And on the bottom here, you can see AC input. If you wanted to run a hard line in from your power box, you can do that. AC output output is there. And these are going to be, you know, we're using four gauge to run to the uh, transfer box. A so pretty heavy duty wiring for sure. USB input for a hub. Wi-Fi and local area can bus stuff there. Battery input, battery input. And then uh, solar control one, solar control two going through here and another on off switch there as well. I'm not gonna take this thing apart in this video. This is gonna be a rather large install. And so you'll definitely get a chance to see more of what's going on with it in future videos. But let me go ahead and we'll unbox the wiring and manual for it. It does come with some connectors and you'll get an idea of the sense of how much juice this thing is gonna put out. Let's just take a look at how big those lug studs are and how big a wire that's probably o gauge or o, o gauge in there it does have lag bolts to mount this thing because it does have some pretty hefty connections up on top so you can hang that in there and then the user's manual let's see what else we got warranty card user's manual which is significant and entirely <laughs> something i'm going to have to spend a lot of time reading through a lot, a lot of information here. I mean, just about everything you could ever consider is in here. Awesome. Well, look, this is big. If I may be so bold as to say. The world's changing, my friends, real fast if you're paying attention. It's about to change a whole lot faster before 2024 is over with. I can guarantee you that, but I can't tell you how I can guarantee you that. It would not be a bad idea for you 
to consider getting into an off-grid type power setup. Things change, and when they change, it's awfully nice to be able to keep the lights on, to be able to keep your house warm with firewood and with uh, electric like this. There's a lot of reasons to get into solar, and it doesn't all have to be for environmental reasons. I hope that makes sense to you, my friends. Stick around. I've got a whole series on solar setups and a whole series on this solar setup coming in 2024. So I hope you'll definitely enjoy that and maybe get some ideas of your own. Till next time, my friends, take care.